All right, so in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to create our registration form and we're going to implement the form validation class or library that comes with CodeIgniter. And if you go to the documentation and click on form validation, uh, there's a, a ton of information here. Um, but if we just look at the syntax, uh, the first thing that I want to show you is this. All right, so this goes in the view, and what it does is it just echoes out the errors that you get. If you set a field to, for required and it's empty, when you submit it, this is where the, uh, the, the validation error is going to go. Uh, if you have multiple errors, then multiple errors will show. All right, so uh, that's that. Now, to implement it in the controller, you can see... Uh, in this example it's loading the form validation library and it's loading the, the form and the URL helper and we don't have to do this because we included all of these in our auto load file uh, what we do need to do is this here alright so we're saying if this form validation is false this means if the form hasn't been submitted alright that's what we want to do and all we're doing here is calling the view if the form is not submitted if it is then this particular example is just loading a success page. All right, our our actual code is going to have uh, some database code into it. We're going to um, shoot off the model and upload um, or insert our registration info. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go and we need to create a new view. So under views users, let's create a new file and save that as uh, register.php. All right, and what I'm going to do here is just paste in the form because we've already gone over the form helper, so it's kind of redundant to just uh, to, to type all this out. So let me paste this in here. I'll go over it real quick. Um, we have a heading, a paragraph. We have our validation errors, okay? This is where the errors will show uh, for our registration. One thing I do want to do is stick in the bootstrap class for uh, an alert, all right? So we'll get the ni nicely formatted bootstrap alert. So let's go ahead and replace this with the bootstrap class. All right, so next we have our form open. We've gone over this. We're submitting this form to the user's controller and the register method, which we'll create. Uh, we have a first name, we have last name, email address, um, username, password, con confirm password, and then a register button. All right, so that's all we need here. So let's save that and let's go to our controller. Uh, and we need to create our user's controller. users.php and this is also where our login method will go when we get to it. Uh, the reason that I didn't complete the login yet and I'm moving on to the register form is because the login form wasn't a good example to show you uh, the form validation class. Uh, this is much more suited to show you how that works. Alright so for the class uh, we're just going to say PHP class users extends CI controller. Alright, so let's put in a public function, uh, public function register. Alright, so this is where we're going to submit our form to. And what we want to do here is we don't want to just throw in our view because we need to check and see if the form has been submitted or not. You could use uh, two different methods. You could use a, a method to display the login form and then have it submit to another method to, to process it. But I like to keep it all in one. Um, it just seems ideal. So we're going to set some rules here. All right. So we want to say this uh, form validation. 
and this form validation set rules. All right, so in here is where we want to put our rules. We have a couple different parameters here. The first is going to be the, the name of the field. In this case is going to be first name. The second argument is going to be a user-friendly version of the name. So we'll say first name. And then the last will be the rules that we want to have. So we want to trim this. And whoop, we need quotes. What trim will do is take off any white space uh, before and after the field. All right, now to, to separate these rules, we use this pipe character. All right, so the next thing we want is required. Okay, they have to put in their first name or they'll, they'll get an error. Uh, next, we want to put in a, a max length. All right, and the max length will go inside of brackets. So for the name, we'll say 30 characters. Well, let's, we'll say 50 characters. All right, and we can also do a min length. And for this, we'll put uh, two. All right, so the last thing I want to put on here is XSS clean. And that just protects us from any XSS um, database attacks or, or whatnot. All right, so I'm going to copy this whole line. And we'll have the same rules for the last name as well. All right, so next would be the email. All right, so let's just paste this in. And the name of the field is email. And where I'm getting this name is from the actual name value, OK? So email, let's see, email will change this to 100 for the max length. Minimum length, um, I guess, would be 5, right? Yeah, OK. And XSS is clean, we'll keep that. There's one more rule I want to add here, and that is valid email. And that will make sure that it's a valid email address. Um, very easy to use this this helper than to try to do this by yourself. Um, you know, we put this in and it, it automatically checks the email for us, so we don't have to create our own function to do that. All right, uh, let's see. We've got a couple more. This will be username. Username. Um, let's see. All right, we'll keep the same. Let's see, the username will have a, a minimum length of six. And let's see, the max length, we'll say 20. All right, now what I want to do for our username and email is create a custom rule, all right? I want to create a custom rule that's going to check the database to see if there is already that email or username. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right this second. But ultimately, we, we're going to want to do that. We don't want two of the same usernames or emails, uh, so we have we need some way to protect that. So the next one will be password. And for password. Let's see, I guess we'll make the minimum length 6 as well, same as the username. And then we have a confirm password, which, let's see, what's the name of that? Password 2. And that's another thing we need to check to make sure that both they both match, which is pretty easy to do. So that's password 2 and for this we'll just say confirm password alright now what we want to do here <coughs> is we want to use the matches rule alright so we'll say matches whoop. matches and then we just want to put in the name of the field that we want to match with it which is password alright so that 
that's also something that would be kind of difficult to code not difficult but just time consuming so so it's great about using a framework like this alright so that's all of our rules the next thing we want to do is to check if the form has been submitted or not and we can do this with an if statement it's going to be an if else and what we're going to say is if this form validation run alright so uh, yeah actually we're going to do if run equals false so if it didn't run we're going to do something and what we're going to do is we're going to load the register view so we're going to use the same format as we did here using a view and basically a template or a layout All right, except this time our main content is going to be in the users folder and it's going to be the register view alright so let's see what we got if we go to um, users slash register alright so there's our registration form uh, I actually want to put a link to the registration form up here so we'll do that in the layout so if we go to views layouts main and right here and this is a good time to, to show you uh, the URL helper alright so we auto loaded this I'm pretty sure uh, and there's a few things we can use this site URL which will give us our site URL um, segments which are for instance this URL here this is the first segment this is the second segment so we can re we can refer to these uh, in our code using the URL helper um, all I really want to do is display a I just want to add a link so we can do that with echo base URL uh, well actually yeah we've been using this all along actually we used it right here so we'll just put that in echo base URL and we're gonna go to users slash register that's gonna be the link so we actually have to put the link alright let's make sure that's working so if we go home actually home is not going anywhere so let's fix that uh, alright so home we'll just grab this here base URL that should do it uh, let's also add this to the logo as well. Alright, so that goes home. Alright, so we can click register, it takes us to the form. Alright, so what we need to do now, actually let's try this. Let's just leave them all blank see what happens alright so you see that we have all these errors um, actually I don't know why that's in there let me check let's check the um, register view alright so we have an extra uh, quote and greater than so get rid of that alright so there's all our um, errors okay so they include the fields that are required uh, the characters in length the confirmed password is required uh, and if we do fill out the confirmed password 
you can see that we get the confirmed password field does not match the password field. All right, so pretty cool. So that's our validation for the form, which looks good. Now we need to um, we need to insert this into the database, and to do that, we need to use a model. And I don't want to go over models in this in this video. So uh, in the next video, we'll actually submit to a model, which will put our user into the database.